Good morning. Um, again, I'm Maureen McDermott with the North Point Group, and I'm very excited about being here as well. Thank you, Roxanne, for inviting me. Um, I've been involved with the home building industry for 25 years. Yes, I did start when I was 12. And I have to tell you that uh, through those 25 years, certainly I've seen ups and downs and changes happen in our industry, but nothing like what we're experiencing today. So I think it's a whole new ball game, a whole new world. And what I'd like to share today are just some of my insights uh, from being in the industry that long, being very linked and involved with the local chapter of the Home Builders Association as well as the state of Ohio and the national, and just give you a snapshot of, of where the bulk of builders are today um, and, of course, where the buyers are. And the builders want to be where the buyers are. So I'm just going to give you a quick snapshot of that. Um, this first slide kind of shows the fact that um, we've lacked genuine diversity in the housing industry. Um, we've been McBuild by McBuilders, and uh, that's been a trend that's been happening certainly since post-World War II. Um, our variety got just wrung out by the efficiency of just serving mass markets, you know, huge waves of buyers, and we just kept building and building and building the same product over and over again. Phase two, more of the same. Um, and what the misunderstanding of all this is thinking that that's what buyers want. That's not the case. I call it the rear view mirror analogy. Um, and I'm not going to, this is not just, quote, a builder problem. This is a problem that's created by how financing takes place for projects. For example, um, I go in, I've got a new project. I have a new idea based on great data and research of a product that I think the market wants and that work very well in this location. You wouldn't believe all kinds of stones that get thrown at you because they're like, well, show where it's work, prove it. It's that rear view mirror. You want to pick up what worked last week and repeat it. And that is a, a big stumbling box for builders and developers in moving forward with new ideas, new concepts, new projects. Um, even before we had our lovely banking crisis situation that we have right now. So what do you end up with? With that rear view mirror approach, inflexible zoning requirements, um, and then of course our, our latest wave of accessible mortgages. We have a glut of single purpose, drivable suburban product. Um, and that is not where people want to live anymore. So the contrary trend is that we hear this over and over again. I love the idea of being in a new home. I love the idea of the energy efficiency, the latest products, being the first homeowner, but I do not want to be in a cookie cutter residence that looks just like every single house on the street. And people will defer to a used home, as we call it in the business, versus a new home just to get diversity, variety, and more of a one-of-a-kind experience in their housing situation. So on top of that, now we have this very diverse demographics. Um, no more husband, wife, two kids is now 25% of the suburban housing home buyers. Um, single women are 21% of the market. That's a huge emerging statistic. Now you guys are lack, you're lagging behind because single men are only 9%. But I mean, these are, are big drivers in evaluating the type of housing that people are interested in. A family, a husband, wife, and two kids versus a single woman will have very different lifestyles, very different consumption patterns, and that affects the type of housing and the location and the type of neighborhood that they're going to choose. This is just showing a shift. It's a little bit old data, but certainly in the cities, we've been dominated with non-family, um, families with no children. But in the suburbs, that's where you start seeing the real shift, again, from the traditional family of mom and dad and two kids is now going down and now not or childless households is rising even in the suburbs. 
Okay, so that's the lay of the land. Now, and builders recognize this, believe me. <laughs> um, so what are we going to do about that? What, what are builders going to be looking for as they're trying to work through their next business ventures and their livelihood of building um, housing? And I'm, I'm breaking it down into three quick little snapshots of uh, process. I think the number one thing that any community can do is have a very succinct, obtainable vision plan. This is the plan of what we want for our community. This is how we want to get there. And you put together that attractive welcome mat for a partner, a builder, investor, to want to be a part of that and realizes that it's financially doable and viable for them to be a part of that. Second thing in that process is having a champion of that vision. That person that's in the community, um, maybe the mayor of the community, whoever it might be, that's gonna champion this vision all the way through the process. And when I say champion, they're the, the vehicle for making sure that we get uh, all the decision makers at the table, that we have timely decisions, that we don't have lagging downtime controversy within the team. It's very important that it's a cohesive, everyone on one page, moving forward to obtain that goal. Um, and then the ability to be flexible. Um, an opportunity might exist where, wow, we start looking at a plan and we see a shared parking situation might be a great alternative. But somewhere dusted in an old rule book, it says, no, that doesn't make sense. Well, we have to be flexible, we have to be realistic, and we all have to have the same vision and the same goals. And then we'll get to the right decisions that way. So I believe that champion who takes the vision plan of your community and carries it all the way through are really key components in making the builders feel welcome and feel uh, very excited about an opportunity to work with you on your projects. The, the second one, financial, um, what I mean by that is that there are expenses that builders are not accustomed to um, out in the burbs. Start, start with the, uh, the site itself. They're used to receiving a building pad that's got utility stub to it, go in, build. Um, when we're talking about in existing neighborhoods, you may have uh, demolition involved, you may have other utility issues you have to deal with, a host of other site conditions that add to the expense and therefore have to be in the equation. Um, the second thing would be just logistics. How do we get the roof trusses to that site? How do we get concrete trucks up the street? Um, how do we park all the vehicles for the construction workers that are actually creating and manufacturing the product? Those are things that in suburbia um, are, are not as great constraints as they are in existing neighborhoods. It's just something to be aware of. Um, it's something that the builders are concerned about, how to overcome those obstacles, and working with them on those would be a, would be a great asset. And then third, uh, critical mass, which um, Bobby certainly talked about, creating a sense of place, um, when you onesie twosie situations in a neighborhood, you, it's very difficult to create a sense of place. And it's very difficult selling proposition to say, trust me, it'll come. That's very weak. Um, we're not very trusting these days. Um, and also, um, it's an opportunity for those in the neighborhood that may not believe in the vision or may not understand the vision uh, to kind of throw stones at the whole process. They need to see the critical mass and need to see a real community uh, happening um, in order to feel good about that and join forces with that. Um, I'm just going to show a real quick uh, project right down the road here. Um, Villages of Daybreak is a um, 300 home, 60 acre project that North Northbrook did, still working on. Um, and of course you can see the 10-year tax abatement is kind of front and center uh, to attract people on that site. Um, pointing out connectivity, uh, the fact that you can walk to parks, libraries, schools, and you're also in close proximity uh, and a great access point to get to downtown and to other clubs. 